Hey everyone, this time on Tim Talks Audio, we continue our stock plugin series going over the built-in compressor. In this video, we're gonna go over all of the different controls on the stock compressor, and we'll touch into a couple examples later on. We're not gonna go too in depth on how to do compression for different things, but this will show you what each of the knobs do and their limits and capabilities. So let's dive into the DAW and take a look at the stock compressor. So here we are inside of our session, and here it is, the stock compressor. We'll start with all the controls and we'll go from the left to the right. First up, ratio. The ratio control allows you to go for very little compression ratio. You can actually go down to one to one, which is no compression, or you can go 1.1 as just barely doing a little bit of compression all the way up to 20 to one. Underneath that you have threshold, which is where the compressor is looking for signal to go over to start compression. The threshold can go all the way up to zero dB and all the way down to minus 48. So you'll have to play with the threshold along with the ratio and many other controls when you're going and setting your compression settings. Underneath that is the knee of the compressor. A knee for a compressor is the character of the compressor to a sense. It's actually how you can ease into compression with a soft knee, or you can do a hard knee and be able to go over your threshold and that's when compression begins. So this is variable as well. You can go all the way down for a very hard knee, or you can go all the way up for a very soft knee and it will gradually go in and out of compression with a soft knee. Up next is look ahead and this looks at your signal and gives you a two millisecond buffer of the signal coming into the compressor. So it's able to detect those transients and the signal coming in so that it can accurately detect all of the transients or program material coming in. Underneath that is stereo link. So if you have a compressor on a stereo channel or a stereo bus, you'll be able to turn this on or off. And what this will do, will take your stereo signal and sum it to mono for a signal power detection rating. If you had this off, it won't sum the stereo signal to a mono for its detection circuit. To the right of this is the graphic representation of the input on the left, the output on the right, the gain reduction meter along the top, and a visual threshold indicator right here in the middle. This middle section also allows you to go in and click to change the variables within your compressor. So I can grab this node here and you can see it's adjusting my threshold if I go left or right. And I can actually grab this node over here and adjust the ratio of the compressor. Still while I'm in here, if I hover over this middle node and use my mouse wheel and scroll up or down, it will change the knee of the compressor. You can see this happening on the left. And there's one last thing you can adjust while you're in this section here. On the bottom left, there is another node that works for your output gain. And it's a little tricky to grab. There it goes. So here is your output gain as well. Now, there is one little thing. If I go ahead and turn on auto gain for the output of this compressor, I now lose the top and bottom markers in the center section here. And this one node allows me to adjust all of the different parameters by going up and down. I can do the threshold and ratio, or the threshold is left and right, the ratio is up and down. And then the mouse wheel is still the knee of the compressor. On the input meter on the left and the output meter on the right, it shows you both peak and a white lined RMS meter. And we'll see those when we put some signals through this compressor. If we move on to the right, and then we'll work in this top section here. Input gain allows you to either pull back or push gain into the compressor. So you can either have this go down to minus 12 if your signal's hitting a little hot, maybe this is later in your signal chain, or you can boost the signal up 24 dB. Next to that is the output gain knob. And right now I have auto engage. If we turn this off, we now have control of the output gain from our compressor. Up next, we'll actually come down to the left over here. This is the attack knob for the compressor. This is after the signal goes over the threshold, how long it will take to get to a certain point of gain reduction. Some studies and manufacturers set theirs to two thirds of total compression amount. That's real nerdy. So attack time is after you go past the threshold, how long it takes for the compression to start. 
And very similarly, and right next to it, is release. After the signal goes below the threshold, how long it takes for the compression to stop after it's gone below the threshold. These are both adjusted in milliseconds. The attack can go all the way down to 0.1 millisecond and all the way up to 400 milliseconds. The release can go all the way down to one millisecond and all the way up to two seconds. To the right of the release knob, you have the auto button and the auto button will adjust the attack and release times according to the source signal being fed into the compressor. And underneath that is the adaptive button. The adaptive button allows for a mild variance of the attack and release times to help avoid pumping of the signal being processed by the compressor. And this is based on the signal going into the compressor as well. It'll modify slightly in the background without showing you the attack and release times to try and make the compression a bit smoother and to avoid pumping. If you want pumping, just turn this off. The last control in this section is our mix knob, and just like in any other thing with a mix knob, 100% is all of the output from the compressor, 0% is no output or essentially bypassing the compressor, or if you put it anywhere in between, you're essentially doing parallel processing in one plugin because it's a blend of both your unprocessed signal and your processed signal. Finally, we'll move down to the sidechain section down here. And the first control we'll actually look at is filter right here. This essentially turns the sidechain detection circuit of the compressor on or off. So if we turn it on, we can now see that a lot of the controls have changed and have become available to us. So let's get into these. Above it is the sidechain channel display. Right now it's set to internal, meaning that the compressor is using the source signal coming in on the channel it's on to detect the signal that needs to be compressed. If we were doing some sidechain compression and using an external trigger, this would change. So if I hit sidechain up on here, you can now see that it says external sidechain, meaning there's signal from another channel coming in to make this compressor react. We're gonna skip the listen filter button for now, and we're gonna talk about the low cut, swap, and high cut controls on the right here. Low cut removes everything below its target frequency going into the detection circuit of the compressor. And similarly, high cut does the same thing, starting at the high and rolling everything off, and low cut does everything for the lows. Low cut, high cut. Then the swap button actually does exactly what it says, and it swaps the frequencies of the low cut and high cut. Then last but not least, we'll go back to it, the listen filter button actually allows you to listen to what you're doing with the low cut and high cut controls. It'll filter out whatever you have, and this way you can really narrow in on your problem frequencies or create like a band pass or a wide band de -esser. You can listen to where all of those S's come in and are really problematic for you, narrow them while listening with the listen filter button on, then when you found it, turn it off, and that is what is hitting the compressor. Now, there's a lot of different reasons why you could use a compressor on any kind of source signal, whether it be vocal, guitar, bass, drums, keyboards, some kind of drum machine, really anything can have its dynamic range limited with a compressor. We're just gonna go over one instance right now of a lead vocal, and show you just some settings on how you could dial them in. We're not gonna go too in depth. I have other videos available. Uh, there'll be links in the description to some of those. So we're looking at a compressor on our lead vocal bus, which is right here. And all of these channels in blue are our vocals just going into this bus. We're gonna put this back to default real quick. And let's very quickly dial some compression in on these lead vocals.
you can see very quickly, we're able to just adjust our ratio threshold. I adjusted the knee a little bit, the attack and release. And then I also did a little output gain just to get it back to the level where it was in our mix before. But with the stock compressor, you're able to quickly dial in a more focused sound of a lead vocal for this instance. And because we're in Studio One, we are able to very quickly and easily set up side chains just by clicking on this button right here. And now I can have this lead vocal have its trigger signal from another source. Maybe I want my guitars to trigger my vocal. I can come down here to my guitar bus and click this checkbox right here. It automatically enables the external side chain. And now there's a send from the guitar bus going into the detection circuit of our compressor. As a more drastic example, let me make this the snare drum. And we'll really hammer it home. You can hear every time the snare hits, it's telling this compressor to push the vocals out of the way. Having a very versatile stock compressor inside any DAW allows even beginners to really understand what it's doing to the signal. And the one inside Studio One is no different from any other one. It gives you a lot of options to be able to discover what compression does and how all of these controls interact with one another. That's all for now. If you found anything informative, please like and share the video. For more, visit timplansbaum.com. And if you have a question, ask it in the comments and I'll answer it in a future video. Thanks for watching.